Good afternoon. We extend to you a warm welcome from Provo, Utah. I'm Sister Espelin and will be one of the hosts for today's class. Today's class is offered to the general public by the BYU Family History Library. Our presenter is James Tanner, who has a love of learning and an extensive background in family history and genealogical research. Today's class focuses on how reliable are hard drives, SSDs, and online storage. In addition to his background in genealogical research, James also has an extensive background in computers. If you haven't been to one of his classes, you are in for a real treat. If you have, welcome back. I'll now turn the time over to James. Okay, we are going to talk about how reliable are hard drives, SSDs, and online storage. And of course, I will explain the differences and why you would want one over the other and what, how important and reliable all of these are and whether or not there's any reason why you would want to do this. So we'll get right into it because it takes a little bit of time and it is, I would say, fairly complicated. Okay, first of all, when you're gonna get started about working on any kind of an electronic device, whether you're working on a smartphone, whether you're working on a, an, a tablet, iPad or other tablet, whether you're working on a computer on your desktop computer, or whether you're even using something like a Chromebook, a Google Chromebook that has basically uh, connecting to the internet and doesn't have any internal storage on its own. It's just a, a way of connecting to the internet. So all of these things have some I have some way of storing the information that you uh, that you have. If we start with the Chromebook, you you're online totally, so everything goes online. When I say online storage, what I mean is it's not on any of your mechanical physical devices that you own, your computer, your iPad, your anything else, if it's stored what they call in the cloud, which is kind of a, a the terminology that everybody's used, uh, that means that it's not local. If, if your computers were all destroyed, which I'll probably mention three or four or five times, and everything, your home was burned to the ground like is happening over in California frequently, then basically you would uh, not lose a thing because it would all be stored up someplace else that wasn't being destroyed. So if you think about where that's going, where it's being stored, if it's on the, normally when people are using a desktop computer, then the information is being stored on the internal hard drive or the internal storage drive of that particular computer. And if it's and if you have additional storage, and that goes for, by the way, before going on additional storage, that goes for your phone. In other words, all the photos you take on your phone are being stored on your phone, on your smartphone. If you're working on your tablet and you're storing documents on your tablet and you're not transferring them to some other device, uh, however that occurs, then, or, or working directly online with an online storage program, then you will be, have them all on that device. And they, and then you have to do something to physically transfer any information that you are working on to another device or to another type of storage, unless you have it set up automatically to happen, which is possible. And we'll also talk about is that um, is you have to do something. You have to actually do something to get to make sure that the documents, the the photographs, the whatever recordings or whatever it is that else that you're doing using your electronic devices are maintaining that and keeping that data, and it's not at risk of being lost or destroyed. Okay, so once you've thought about it, the next thing you need to consider is the risk of loss. And it would be the time it takes to replace or recreate all the work stored on your computer and external devices. So what that translates to be is it's gonna cost you something. 
it's going to cost you some amount of dollars or time to uh, restore that particular information. If you have a photograph, for example, let's say uh, you take some pictures at a funeral. I'm just going to give that. And you and that and your smartphone, you've taken all these smartphone photos and on the way home, you drop your smartphone and it's broken and it's irretrievable and you can't get to it. Well, unless that information has been stored someplace else, like automatically copied to the internet uh, on it, onto a, a program, like uh, one of the many photo programs, there's ones from Google Photos, there's uh, Amazon Photos, there's uh, Dropbox, there's just, there's, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of these companies where you can back up everything on your phone automatically. Sometimes it's automatic, sometimes it's kind of semi-automatic. But if it's an event like that, like a funeral or a, a, some sort of thing that happens in your life once, a t once in your life, then it's gone. It's not retrievable. There's no way uh, that even the time or the money that might be spent uh, can be replaced. Now, if you're simply doing genealogical research, for example, and you're storing all the data, you go to the library, you spend a, a day or two days or even a week at the library, and you take all these pictures of all these books and you all these documents that you find, and you have this amount of information and all your notes and everything on your device, whether it's your laptop or whatever, and you've got all that information there, and then you lose that because it crashes or because it's damaged in some way, then that can that has to be re recreated. Okay, so that's kind of the situation we're in. We're basically at the mercy of all of these eventualities, the kinds of things that might happen. And it sounds like I'm trying to sell insurance, but in a sense, that's what we have here. We are uh, we have insurance uh, to um, uh, that. We, we buy insurance, people buy insurance for various purposes to minimize the impact of, of these kinds of, of unforeseeable events. Uh, but I can guarantee you that if you haven't got your information backed up, the, the chances of you losing that information aren't exactly 100%, but they're extremely close to 100%. And we're talking about over a period of time. So the longer time you go without backing up, the more likely it is that something will happen that will make you lose all that information. So uh, I'm going to relate the parable of the three backup disks. And that's where I learned this. And this was back when we had floppy disks. And there was, compared to today, a tremendous, a very, very small amount of information compared to what I have on even any of my devices today. But uh, this, in this case, I was doing a directory. Now that was a directory that involved entering about 3000 people uh, into um, a directory. And I had physically done that work. In other words, I had gotten information and entered all of that information into uh, a computer which took me uh, a number of weeks. It was weeks worth of work. And 3,000 to me today does not sound like a, a big job, but back then that was one of the first times I'd done anything of that, that kind of scope uh, on a computer. And then I got all that information was stored and it's just what you call a text file. So they're they're really, really small files comparative to a photograph or a, a movie or a, a recording of any kind. But uh, any images are much larger than any storage today is much larger than the, the capacity of any of these floppy disks that existed back then. One picture is more is bigger than the capacity of one of these disks. One of the photographs that I go click with my smartphone would not fit on one of these disks. These, that's how little information there was. So basically what happens is that um, the disk crashed, disk number one. And so I went, oh no, it's crashed. 
And then I went, oh, I am so glad I did a backup. And so I put in disk number two. And disk number two crashed. And it did not work. And I went, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And then I went, oh, oh, I've got another backup at home. So I went back, got this backup and brought it and plugged it in and it crashed. And yes, I had to recreate the entire directory all the way from scratch and do all of that work over again. So that taught me a lesson. And so from that point in my life, which was oh, probably close to 40 years ago, um, when, I, when computers were just really very starting, just getting started and crashing floppy disks was not at all unusual. I learned a lesson that I have probably lived with all the rest of my life and that you might call it a, a kind of state of paranoia that I worry about losing my data almost uh, all the time. Not all the time. I mean, you know, I could go to sleep and I'm not worried about it unless I have a bad dream about losing data. But anyway, but it's something that's always there. And so I'm always making efforts to, to stop any that from happening. So the first rule, the absolute first rule that of, of maintaining this storage and, and the reliability, and we'll get to how reliable each type is in just a moment. But if you put all your wigs in one basket, in one basket over time, loss is inevitable. It's just not, it, you cannot avoid loss if you only have your data stored on one device. It's just not gonna happen. I mean, it would be a it would be a quirk. It would be out of the ordinary if somehow or another your um, data survived uh, a crash or loss or a, a disaster, destruction. So when we're talking about backing up our data, what are we talking about? What is a backup, and how does it? And by definition, what is it? So first of all, there's two levels. One, you're talking about backing up an individual file. Okay, so you do a word processing document and you save it to your disk, whatever it is, a flash drive or your computer or whatever, you save that. Once you've saved that, that's an individual file and you've made a copy, you've made a uh, backup copy, I mean, not a backup, you've made an original copy of whatever work you were working on. So as you worked on um, the, the, the document, I'll give you a very simple thing. You write a letter on, a, on, a, on Microsoft Word, and then you go save as, and you save it out to wherever you would go to save things. You have one copy of that letter or one copy of that document. That is basically how each item that you work on is saved. So as I, take a picture on my phone, that's another file. As I take, as I record something, that's another file. As I send an email, that's another file. In other words, we are accumulating each of these individual acts or, or creations that we've done on our device. Now, when we talk about backup for that, we don't, we, you can back up an individual file. For example, if I, was taking photographs on my phone, which I do, I periodically can come and plug my phone into my computer and copy all those photographs into my desktop computer, which by the way is a Apple iMac. And I can put that information in my computer. Now it's sitting on my desktop computer and a copy is still on my, on my iPhone or my smartphone. How do I do that? It varies on the, on the device. If you have a smartphone, there's somewhere on that smartphone, there's a connector that can allow you to connect it to, to uh, uh, do something, at least recharge the battery. And, and in essence, there's usually another connector, which is called a USB port. Um, and the USB port will allow you to connect that to another device. So then you can download the information off your smartphone onto your computer, your laptop, your desktop computer, 
um, or even another tablet computer, I suppose there's a way to do that also, although that would be sort of trading places rather than, than actually giving you a backup. Okay, so what else? Well, so copying the files on a main computer device such as, or an other device to another device such as a hard drive, that's a backup. So if you have more than one copy of the original document, then one of those is the backup. One of those is your original and it's gonna be your working copy and, and it's the one that's there. The other one is there just in case the original gets destroyed. Now, if we, if we think in terms of that, then all we're doing is cutting the risk by some percentage down from uh, the possibility of that of losing that information. And uh, if that if you lose your phone and you've backed up you know, almost everything or everything off your phone in some kind of regular fashion and uh, you don't have that much information or if most of the stuff on your phone is being uploaded to an online storage place like Google Drive or as I've mentioned, some other uh, location out there that allows you to store information, then you are uh, you probably losing your phone may be an inconvenience and not a catastrophe. And so you'll basically just have to replace it. And then once you replace it, you can still access the same documents, the same files that you have online that, that are now in a sense protected. Now, a backup is not a backup unless the files will will not be destroyed when the main device fails or destroyed. Okay, so let's, let me exam, give you an example. Okay, so I, I have it on my phone and I copy it onto my desktop computer. And then I leave my phone on the desk and lightning comes down and goes and everything disappears and there's nothing left. And I still haven't backed it up. I've lost both devices at the same time and both devices, even though one was a backup and one was the original, they're both gone. So that's kind of the parable of the three floppy drives, because even though there was a backup and a backup to the backup, there were three but two backups to the original, all three of them failed. And so the, the information was lost regardless of the fact that I had spent time copying it over at least twice, and regardless of the time that the floppy disk, the third floppy disk was not in the same location as the, as the original, as the original and the first backup. So all of that can happen. So now what we got to do is mention that any disaster, the backup must be offsite in a, in a, in a secure location. In other words, a real backup, a real, making sure the information is not lost implies that you have put that information in a place that is not simultaneously destroyed at the same time that the original file is destroyed. So you've got to get it out of your house because if a house fire comes and burns your house to the ground, then even if you have five backups in your house, all of them are going to be lost. So this is the, this is the situation we find ourselves in. Now, when you have a program, a program may say, do you want to back up your data? Um, there's a very popular genealogy program that automatically asks you if you want to back up your data. Whenever you, you quit, it'll come up with a message that says, do you want to back up your data? If you just click that and copy the data onto your, <laughs> the same computer, that you're working on, basically, it's not a backup. You don't have a copy of you. You may have an extra copy on your internal hard drive on your computer, but you haven't got a backup copy because if the hard drive crashes, both of those are going to be lost. So backups only become a backup when they're separated by some either physical or electronic means like being on the cloud, being away from your storage, somebody else's computer. So that's how you, you have a backup system. So 
here's the here's the elements of a good backup system. And um, what we've got here is a, a screenshot, a picture of uh, somebody doing what's called a rope course, where they uh, are trying to learn some kind of skill, uh, usually not associated with falling off of planks up in the air, uh, having to do with business that, that lets them see that they can do hard things. But this little rope that runs up from the, the guy on the plank to the pulley above his head on the other line, that's his backup. If he makes a misstep and falls off of that plank, then hopefully the guy down below who's got a hold of that rope or whatever uh, will stop him from crashing into the ground and breaking everything in his body. So that's kind of the situation where we're working about. What is a good backup system? And having been a rock climber and having used and been in the situation of, of climbing on ropes um, and uh, up cliffs for many, many, many years of my life, uh, that guy has really taken a big risk right there. <laughs> I wouldn't call that very well backed up, but anyway. So what's a good backup system? So first one is it needs to be automatic or very easily utilized. In other words, you can't have a sophisticated, very complicated backup system because if it, revol if it revolves around you automatically moving stuff from here to there and around in different places, that is never going to work. You're going to get tired of it. You're going to take shortcuts. You're not going to have time. In a hurry, you're going to click and say, oh, I don't have time. I'll come back. But basically, it has to be very easy, extremely easy, or automatic. Now, we'll talk about how that occurs in just a minute. It has to be cost effective. It can't be so expensive that it's not worth it. Now, let's talk about worst, about worth of what we're doing. Uh, most people, when they do their own work for their own purposes, do not value their work. In other words, they don't put a monetary value on the time that they spend uh, working on their genealogy or writing letters or just being on the computer or whatever they're doing. They're not, they're not trying to monetize that. They're not saying that it's worth that much money. But understanding that if you have to do it over again, you'll have to spend a certain amount of time and the question is, does that have a worth to you? Are you, uh, do you care? In other words, are you going to be worried or upset because you lost the information? The answer is, well, yeah, probably. But the question that, to what you, how you have to analyze this is, what is that worth to you? Uh, is it worth a certain amount of money? Is it worth a certain amount of your time? Uh, are you going to go out and buy the backup equipment that you need, like a hard drive and or two or three or four or five or six or whatever you want to buy? And are you going to continually upgrade your equipment so that you don't lose any information? Okay, is it safe? Uh, this is this is the simple uh, analysis. Do you if you back it up to something that's in the same room as your computer, even a localized fire will destroy both. So it's not safe yet. It needs to be someplace in the same area. Now, if you back it up to a, a service, an online service, for example, who they do online backup or cloud storage or whatever you want to call it, then the question is how reliable are they and how are they going to go out of business or is your information going to be lost anyway or what else? Is it long lasting? In other words, if you put it on this device, how many years or how long can you depend on that device actually, actually storing your information? Now there's something else that needs to be raised. We'll start back with the, the three floppy disk fable. So here's, here's the three floppy disks. That floppy disk, by the way, is not accessible today from any device that you might ordinarily have or have purchased in the last 10 years. So how do you get that information into your computer? Well, you can buy an external floppy disk that will attach or drive 
a floppy disk drive that's external, a USB connecting to your USB port on your computer, assuming you have one. And if you're, if you're not understanding what I'm talking about and connecting a USB to your computer, then you need to get a little bit more information than I'm going to be able to talk about uh, in this one hour presentation. But basically, if you, if you do that and you put in your floppy disk, guess what? You need a program that will read the information or recognize the information on that floppy disk. And one of those is called the operating system of your computer. And it might be interesting to know, and I'll repeat this, that your operating system basically is replaced with a new one about once a year. So every year that goes by decreases the absolute possibility um, uh, of what happened. Now, the question came up about me showing floppy disks. That was earlier in the presentation, and I'm just referring to floppy disks as a storage device that's now obsolete. So I don't have a picture of floppy disks anymore. And I'm giving you a long list. Okay, so long lasting has more to do than just uh, physical time, it has to do with, with changes in the computer. It also is important to understand, and this is a more extensive part of the whole system, it doesn't end when you die or become incapacitated. In other words, if you die and somebody throws your computer away because you're dead, then anything you backed up or any information that you have on the internet or wherever that isn't retrieved or somehow preserved past that point is gone. Okay, so there you go. So the question is, which is better? Which of these three types of devices that are currently used rather extensively uh, are the better device? The first one is a USB flash drive. It's also called a thumb drive. It's also called a portable, somehow a portable drive. It's it uses what's called solid state digital device or digital device um, or SSD is either solid state digital or solid state device. But it's a, uh, the information is recorded in on computer chips. They don't move, they don't, uh, they take a minimal amount of energy and they store an awful lot of information. It's a newer technology and it, right now it's uh, the, the uh, as we'll see, the cost of, of the drives are, are dropping incrementally, um, they, not day after, well, day after day. So essentially uh, they, could, they could drop another percentage point of cost tomorrow. So that's something that's coming down in price. The other type of, is the big hard drive here. It's, it's a box. And it may look similar to an SSD. They're both housed in a, in a box, but one is a solid state device and the hard drive is what's called a spinning media. It means that it has a, a special coded disc inside that's used for recording the information that spins at a very high rate. And right now, the difference is that hard drives are far cheaper and they contain considerably more information over the long of then then the SSD drives. So an SSD drive of the same capacity of storage capacity as a hard drive is going to cost uh, quite a bit more in cost than the hard drive does. Um, at some point that may cross. In other words, it may be that SSDs continue to, to decrease in cost at an incremental cost, and then hard drives can't get any more, and eventually SSDs take over the whole market, which everybody right now expects to happen at some point. The third one up there by all the little cubes floating around in the air is online storage. And that means that the information is being housed on somebody else's hard drive, usually what's called a server or a server farm, and this can be anybody from Amazon down to any other storage. Google has storage. Uh, practically Microsoft has storage. Everybody is selling some kind of storage. And there's just a, a long list. So if you go online on Google and search for online storage, 
you'll get a whole long list that you can research and go through and see which one you think is the best one to use. But the question is for that I would ask is why not use all three? And I think that's one of the safest ways to make sure that your information is, is uh, kept because your, in, your external devices, your flash drives and your hard drives can hold the information. It may not cost you very much to add online storage and make sure that everything on your, all your, your computers and their connected devices are, um, are backed up and, and copied. And the advantage of this is that they will make a complete copy of everything on your hard drive, meaning your operating system and all your programs. And so if everything gets destroyed, you simply have to buy a new computer and download all that information to your computer. And you've got everything back. Unfortunately, prices for data storage went up rather than down over the past three years. But now they're coming back down rather quickly, as a matter of fact. But for the last three years, uh, they were going up because of supply issues, because of the pandemic, because of um, just all sorts of reasons, political problems that were occurring around the world. And it's, it's volatile. The price for all this stuff is, is, uh, can change from time to time. And so watching that and knowing what, what it really costs and knowing what is a good deal and what's not a good deal sometimes takes some price uh, research where you're uh, looking at prices perhaps on, on a, uh, a website like Ancestry or some, I mean, excuse me, Amazon or something where you can uh, um, determine how and how much things are costing at that time. Okay, so let's get started with the costs of these various devices. Right now, and these prices are relatively recent. I did them a, a week or a couple of weeks ago, but they probably haven't changed more than a few dollars unless there's been some jump in the, in the price in which you'll be able to tell that it was better than this price here. So, and also if you look at the bottom, uh, I'm using the cost per gigabyte of data storage per unit with a high and a low value. I'm disregarding fraudulent high capacity claims and the prices can change from day to day. Now here's the reality. You can get onto Amazon, for example, and I'm gonna use that because it's fairly common. And you will see uh, a, a flash drive offered that says it has a terabyte of storage and it'll be $35 or $40. And you'll say, wow, that's cheap. Oh, that looks like a good deal. It isn't a good deal because that is fraudulent. It cannot possibly be a one terabyte flash drive. It just is not. And if you read all the reviews, you'll find out uh, that there are no, there's no way that that, doc, that, uh, that disc will hold a terabyte. Now, it might be a high capacity disc. It might be many gigabytes. And, in, and if you keep using it, you may think you have an unlimited amount of storage. Let me tell you a little bit. Let's, it's, that's why I was mentioning before we got started that uh, I think there'd be a good thing to talk about, about disk storage. Because from a genealogical research standpoint, unless you are digitizing thousands and thousands of pages of documents or even tens of thousands of pages of documents, the size of your files and the amount of the information that you're storing is relatively insignificant compared to the size of most of these hard drives. If you bought, which is now kind of ubiquitous, a one terabyte, that's a thousand gigabyte hard drive, you, you probably are not gonna live long enough to fill it, even if you did work on it every day of your life. And unless you go start recording movies offline or doing something that's like, you know, like collecting everything you can collect and just downloading thousands of pictures and things like that. If you do that, of course, you might be able to fill it up. But unless you're working on it consistently over a long period of time, it's probably not going to happen. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, I presently 
am backing up 15 terabytes of information. That may not seem make any sense to some people, but on the other hand, if you realize that, that how much information that is, it takes me a minimum of a week to two weeks to back up one hard drive of having the hard drive working to store the information uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's that's one of the physical limitations of this of the information that's here. Now look at the prices here. You got a 128 gigabyte, which is very, very good size right now. 256 would be better and maybe a 512 and you'd probably never run, run out of space. Um, give you some idea, a 128 gigabyte USB flash drive, I can, I can put about a thousand photos on that from my cameras. So it takes a long time to fill up even at 128 gigabyte hard drive. It costs about right now about $16. Let's round up. And that comes out to about 12 cents per gigabyte. If you go to a terabyte USB, those are a little more expensive and that's gonna put you back for, this is a legitimate one. This is the legitimate price. If you see a price that's any, any significantly different than about $150 for a terabyte flash drive right now, you're getting scammed. And it's about 15 cents. So it's actually a little bit more expensive to buy in that quantity because they're manufacturing more of the 128 USB flash drives than they are the terabyte drives. So that's how that works. So now you go to a, a portable two terabyte external hard drive. This is something like they're selling at Costco or online right now. You can walk into the store and buy a, for $59.99, 60 bucks. You can buy a two terabyte external hard drive which would be probably your capacity of everything you have on every device you have in your house and still have plenty of room, uh, overwhelmingly amount of room left over on your hard drive. Um, I have a four terabyte internal hard drive on my computer. I have been working on it on this particular computer now for about two years. And I have stored things every single day for two years and I have yet to use even 25% of the memory on my computer. So this, this is uh, most of the right now memory is simply not an issue about the size of a file. For years and years, everybody had to worry about how much space they had on their computer to store information. Now we have essentially unlimited space that we don't even have to be concerned about the size of files or what we're, what we're copying or downloading or how much information we're creating. You can jump up to now a 16 terabyte, which is overwhelmingly uh, the largest drive, which I have now on my computers are 10 terabyte hard drives and they still have extra space over all the stuff that I have to do. So basically now they're running at about just under $500, but they're about the same price per gigabyte as the two terabyte hard drives. So hard drives have basically stabilized out at a, at a regular price. And now no matter, it, you can buy what you need in size and you won't be paying any more or any less for it. So if you want to opt for a larger one, just, just to play safe, then you can. Now, uh, we need to talk about reliability. And we'll get to that in just a second, but let me finish with the, with the um, cost. If you, if you go to a larger SSB, external solid state drive, you can, guide, you can buy one of those um, right now and they'll have a rescue service and everything else for about 14% per gigabyte. You can see how much more that is. It's quite a, quite a bit more than the cost of the hard drive storage. But the difference in actual cost is not, is not considerable. 
the difference between paying $69 and $149 depends on your economic status, but basically that's not a big difference. And a two terabyte extreme portable SSD today is gonna cost you about $250, $233.99 was the price for one. Uh, and these are all good solid companies. They're the ones who are have reliable have reliability or used by the professional backup services. I would I didn't include any of the kind of off the wall uh, replica type people out there. So you can see even with on these, the cost does drop slightly when you go to a um, the price. Now, what about online storage? Online storage is extremely complicated because there's two components. One is the storage component and the other is the replacement component. So you can pay a certain amount of money to back up all your data on your individual computer or on multiple computers. And that turns out to be sort of like a, a network, a connection fee to your network. You pay a certain amount of money every month or annually based on a monthly charge or whatever. And then that is the cost of backing up your, your basic systems. And that happens automatically. Uh, so I have a, an online backup service and all 15 terabytes of my information is backed up constantly to the internet. Now, the real question would be, how much would it cost if I lost all these all this information? How much would it cost me to restore that information to me? That's a separate cost from the backup cost. And sometimes they'll say, back up for X dollars a month, and then you'll read the fine print, well, not even the fine print, but you'll work your way through their long, their long website. And then you'll figure out that, yeah, that's fine. But if you actually have a crash, you may end up spending hundreds of dollars, even thousands of dollars to get all of that information back. Now, maybe you're taking that risk. You'd say, well, if I keep doing that and at some point in time, I have to do that, maybe I then buy other insurance to cover that cost. Well, I'm in other words, there's, this is a, this, this is why I say it's more complicated because the cost of, of backing it up is not going to be included in the cost of the download. Okay, so here's, here's the bottom line on online. It may have a low monthly cost, but there would be a much higher charge to send you a drive with all your backed up data or to restore the data from the, from the online. If they send you a drive, then you're going to have to pay for the cost of the drive also, which of course you've just seen may not be that much in the, in the cost. So that's why they can offer that kind of, of deal. So that's, that's kind of the way you look at this. So you need to look at the cost, the amount of information, uh, the amount of data. And if you look at some of the online services, like the ones like uh, Apple has, uh, that have uh, Microsoft has, and that you can get uh, like uh, Dropbox and Google Drive and all of those different ones that are out there. Your question is, what are you getting and how much is it going to cost? And if you look at it on a per gigabyte cost for having to store your information or terabyte cost, whatever, then basically you're gonna find out that there's a huge disparity. Some of those services are extremely expensive. They're three to four to five times as much as other services. And so there's some of those services, for example, and I'm not getting into the, the business here of telling, you know, saying which ones, but basically some of those services are more expensive than, um, you can imagine, they're just they're they're just not worth it. They're basically a, a ripoff, and if you're only using a very very small amount of data and you're not storing huge massive amounts or hundreds of thousands of scanned images, like I am, then that may be enough for you, and you may pay your five dollars a month, and that may be on a scale ten times more than 
than it would cost to store um, 10 times more than the information than you have. So you may be able, for example, get the same price for storing a terabyte of information from one company as you get for storing 256 gigabytes or even, a, even 128 gigabytes of information from another company. So you need to be really, really careful of, of what you're getting and how you're buying it. You understand that the, 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 the uh, medium here is gigabytes of data right now. So it may get into terabytes of data, but that's, that's probably coming along pretty shortly. So the prices of online storage can vary from a few dollars to hundreds of dollars a month. And the cost of restoring the data may be either included or not included. And there's other ways. You may be spending $150 a month for, for backup and they, they agree to give you all the data back free, or you may be paying $5 a month for the backup and you have to pay for all the restored data. So one way or the other, it's what you're on. So do your homework, search for options online. Remember the cost of online storage is part of the cost. Also remember that it's part of the cost of maintaining an online internet service. So if you're, you have a connection to the internet, whatever that connection is, whatever supplier you're, you're using at the moment. And that cost is just, um, uh, just is part of the cost of maintaining the, of maintaining the backup because you have to maintain your internet connection or your backup to online doesn't work at all. Okay. So that's enough of that. Uh, okay. So let me talk, let me talk for just a second while I'm showing this thing about uh, the fact that smartphones usually have limited storage measured in gigabytes. We have the first smartphones coming out that have an option to purchase a terabyte of internal memory on a smartphone. The people who use that, by the way, are people who are producing commercial videos using their smartphones, which is now possible with the way that the smartphones work. But otherwise, most people will never use uh, even 10% of that amount of information in the lifetime of their phone. Okay, but there's one other issue out there, and that is uh, how much, what kinds of, of, of data do you really have to back up? What are you really important to you? And what is it that you want to make sure is preserved? And so if you're just think if you're working on a computer at the during the, the kinds of this is, this depends if your computer is something that you use occasionally and you might write a few emails and you might do uh, you know look for some prices and do some look up and watch a movie or two that's one thing if you're actually doing serious work on your computer commercially, or you're, you're relying on it for your job, or you're relying on it for uh, genealogical research purposes, and you have tons of data stored on it from all of these different programs, then, um, then basically you need to take that into account. Now there's an out, you know, you have to remember that there are some of these programs that actually um, do. So how many times have you lost or broken your phone? We just, I just went through this. I dropped my phone. I actually, I didn't drop it. I crashed into a table and with it when it was in my pocket and broke it. And so uh, I had to go get it fixed. Fortunately, it wasn't broken. It was just, um, actually the screen protector was broken and it didn't even break the screen. So how many photos do you have on your smartphone right now? And how many of those would you be sad to lose? So that's kind of the same question that we ask about everything. And when was the last time you backed up your smartphone? Also remember, damage can be long-term or instantaneous. Uh, if you're running a system like Windows Vista on your computer, and if you don't even know what Vista is, I'm not surprised, but that's one of the very, very old programs, but we do run into people who are still running the old Microsoft Windows programs on their computers. Those are ticking time bombs. Those are like a dry forest. They're just waiting for you to do something that crashes your whole computer and you lose all your data. You have to 
be involved in the computer upgrade a process in order to preserve any kind of future. And you remember that new computer systems are introduced about once a year. This means that you have to do it. Windows 11 is the latest major release of Microsoft's Windows NT operating system. It was released in October of 2021. And we can expect an upgrade to Windows 11 uh, anytime. In fact, there have probably been a number of incremental upgrades over the last year. And I can say for sure that there have been upgrades for Apple's operating system and the iOS operating system on the phones and Android because I've just done upgrades on all of my machines. And you can check to see your operating system on the Mac. You go up to the little Apple up in the corner and you, or and you look about and you've got your computer and it will tell you your the system that you're running. And basically uh, companies from time to time, including Microsoft and everyone else announce that they are no longer supporting, which means that that you're it's dead. You're dead in the water because if you really have any problems, there's nothing you can do about it. And that is, they continually are are, are telling you we, year by year that there are things that are no longer supported. So if you are living in the in the world of a computer that is no longer supported with an opera or an operating system that's no longer supported, you basically are. Um, skating on thin ice and looking for something to happen to you. And here's uh, the same thing from Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge and all of the other things that happen with both Apple and Microsoft. Now, how long do these things last? The lifetime of the average hard drive based on statistics, what I'm saying here about six years is based on cumulative statistics from a massive server farm, a, a, a company that backs up onto thousands and thousands and thousands of disks and keeps statistics on the, on the failure rate of all these different manufacturers and everything. When you take all of that into consideration, the average hard drive lasts about six years. If you've got a hard drive that's over six years old, you're running on borrowed time. And the only thing you need to do is go buy a new one, transfer the data to the new computer. And if you need to help doing that, then you need to come and see us and talk to us or um, uh, to someone around you that knows how to do that. The modern SSD, that's a flash drive, unless it's lost. Uh, first uh, will last about five years under optimal operating conditions. What usually happens with the SSDs at the flash drives is that when you bought one five years ago, the capacity was so small, you couldn't even put more than another, another picture on it. That it isn't even enough to hold five or 10 pictures. It's too small because the capacity of flash drives is still changing constantly. Now they're up to a capacity that exceeds most of the, of the needs of almost all the people who are doing genealogical research, unless you're like I am and some others like me. So the online storage relies entirely on the longevity of the company. If the company goes down, if their facility crashes or burns or is destroyed for some way, then you lose your online data. That's why you maintain your on-site data, your, site, your computers and your backups, because if that goes down, then you simply get a new company and start the process over. And it may take you another week or so to get the information downloaded again. So it's a good idea to have backup of your backup. And in my case, six hard drives backing each other up. When a hard drive crashes, one of the six crashes I now get uh, most of those operating systems like Microsoft and Apple are sophisticated enough to tell you that it's going to that your disk is going to crash. So you get a little message that says file saving errors or whatever, and uh, you know that that hard drive's days are numbered. So you retire it from service, and then you, uh, and you're, if you're me, you buy a new hard drive, you transfer all the data off of it while it's still operating and then retire the old drive. But I, I'm not depending on that one drive because I have five other copies of the stuff. Okay.
So answer these questions. When did you last up to your, your computer's operating system? How old is your computer? When did you last update your smartphone? Where did you store your data? What would happen if your computer failed today? What would happen if you lost your smartphone? Be safe rather than sorry. Thanks for watching. Do we have any questions? Okay, there's a comment here that has to be corrected a little bit. Hard drives are better than a spinning one. If you drop the spinning one, you can lose your, your info. Okay. When you're talking about a hard drive, you're talking about the, the term hard drive refers to spinning. So a hard drive is the same as spinning data. A SSD drive or a solid state drive is the one that takes drops more than hard drives do, but they can still be, they can still be damaged by dropping. You don't drop your stuff regardless of what kind of storage it has, because it can get lost. What's the best format to save pictures in memory for memories app? PNG is a question mark. Um, JPEG images are perfectly fine. The issue with JPEGs versus TIFFs versus PNGs versus all the other formats has to do with people who are modifying the, the images. In other words, photographers, designers, commercial people who are modifying your, your the images. That's when it comes into play. Be, beyond that, uh, if you store JPEGs, they're just great. And if PNGs are smaller, see, okay, so now we're getting into the issue of storage space. Somebody said they are large. The answer is storage is no longer an issue. The size of the image has is just totally irrelevant. You have, a, if you have a 500 gigabyte hard drive, you don't care how big your images are. Or if you're into a terabyte drive, which is just a few dollars more expensive, it just has absolutely no, and family search doesn't, doesn't care. They allow whatever those, whatever's listed on their, their, what they're accepting, they're already taking into account that they're going to have to store that kind of document. So it's no longer an issue. We don't worry about file size. Only thing we come into file size problems with, by the way, is now sending emails and Google has created the, uh, solve that problem for me because uh, I have, a Google Drive account of a terabyte of, of, of memory. And so I can just, and it will use Google Drive. If it's too large, it automatically puts a copy on Google Drive and sends the link to the recipient. So I don't even have to worry about email being too large anymore. So there's ways around all of that. Okay, thanks.